Before we start, if you are completely new to programming, I highly recommend you to go search these terms, variable, for loop, and array of JavaScript. Google would throw you thousands of websites and blogs, and I'm sure they are all amazing, but I would personally recommend Khan Academy or Code Academy. Very first step to understand the sample code I extracted from my creative coding timeless video of drawing Apple Watch Activity Apps logo with P5JS. The first step is making an array called colors. Array is one of data types in computer science and it is a list-like object. In most programming languages, we call the order of array as index, which means we access each element in the array by calling the index of that element. And the index of array starts with number zero. So we can use this first element of colors array by calling colors bracket zero, the second one colors bracket one, the last one colors bracket two. Next step is understanding for loop, which is very important programming logic you'd get used to, especially when you want to repeat certain actions. In our code, the repetitive action we want is drawing multiple circles. Just like its name, we may understand this for loop as an execute this code block inside the bracket over and over again for a certain number of times. And we define this certain number of times and conditions of for loop inside this parentheses written right next to the word for. Inside parentheses, there are three crucial information divided by semicolon. The first part is initialization. We initialize the starting index of this for loop. You can start from zero, you can start from one or 10, whatever you want. Next part is condition. Repeat this code over and over, but we also want to make it stop at some point. Otherwise, your computer would get overwhelmed of infinite words. This code block will get executed as long as this condition stays true. Last part is incrementing or decrementing the index of for loop. Plus plus here means plus one. Minus minus means minus one. If you want to increment by adding two, you would write like i plus equal two, which is the same as i equal i plus two. Another example, subtracting three, you'd write i minus equal three, i equal i minus three. Here, I started the index of for loop with zero because I want to use this i value to access each color in my colors array, which also starts from zero. And since I only want three circles, which is as same as the numbers of elements in my colors array, I set my condition to three. Here, I declared this variable called len, L-E-N, as three in the very beginning of code, and I'm using it down here in for loop. But more common practice and actually better practice would be writing colors.length instead of this len. So i is smaller than colors.length. And length of colors array is three. Just a quick tip is don't get confused with your index of array and the length of array. Length of array means how many elements are there in your array, but index starts from zero. So your array's last index would always be different from the length of array. If you're confused with how for loop works, which is totally normal, I highly recommend you to look up Khan Academy or Code Academy. Let's lay out how this for loop works in this code to clarify for all of you. The variable i starts from zero. And this i is going into as an index of colors array. So we set the color as colors bracket zero and then draw ellipse. At the end of this code block execution, the variable i gets incremented by one. And now go back to the beginning of for loop we just updated our i to one. Checking the condition, which is, is i smaller than three? i is still smaller than three, so we are not stopping. After this code execution, i gets incremented again. 
and go back to the beginning of for loop again, check the condition i is smaller than 3. After this execution, it is incremented again, and now i is 3. Go back to the beginning of for loop again, and what do we see? Does it still meet the condition? No, this condition is false now, so we are stopping the loop here. Before we end this section, one more thing we need to pay attention to. Do you see the first parameter of my ellipse function? It's not zero, but size multiplied by i. Because of this, our circles are not overlapped to each other and rather beautifully aligned like this. This is because the value of size multiplied by i generates different x coordinate for each circle, which is the first parameter of the ellipse function. The size variable is defined at the top of this code, and I'm using it as width and height diameter of each circle. Quick reminder, ellipse function's parameters are x, y, width, height values. If you don't remember it, please refer to my previous tutorial or P5JS official reference page. In this for loop, i gets updated from 0 to 1 and then 2. So this first circle's x coordinate is size multiplied by 0, which is 0. So its x, y coordinate is 0, comma 0. Second circle, 50 multiplied by 1. So it's 50, comma 0. And the last one is size 50 and i is 2. So it's 100, comma 0. If we make x coordinate something bigger than a diameter of circle, let's say give width height values as same as right now, 50, but change the multiplier of x coordinate as 55 or 60, something bigger than diameter, the circles would have some gap between one another. If we make it as 45, 30, something less than diameter, they would be overlapped. So this is how we can create three colors of three circles in P5JS. You can move these circles by changing the x and y coordinate values of this ellipse function. But that's not the only way. I use translate function in my activity app logo creative coding challenge, and I'll explain it further in the next tutorial video. Last but not least, in my final code, there's one little difference in the leaps function's first parameter, which is x coordinate. Final version's x coordinate is size plus size multiplied by i. Now, if I don't add this size, as you can see here, the first circle is at the center of canvas, but we cannot see it rotating around just like other ones. In order to give some empty space in the very center of these spirals, like how Activity Apps logo looks like, we are adding size. Also, as I explained a few minutes ago, the first circle's i value is zero. So if we don't add this size variable, then the first blue circle's coordinate will be zero. But as soon as we add this size variable back, now it is a little apart from the center of this canvas and we can see it rotating. You may better understand this after you learn the translate function in my next video.